It's finally happening. As per a very popular request, today we're gonna to be checking out a $1,000 full PC gaming setup guide. Not just a gaming PC build video, not just a monitor review, but the entire thing. Let's get into it. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today I'm gonna to be showing you guys what I would buy if I was starting from scratch and had $1,000 to build a full PC gaming setup. And if you're new here and you wanna see more videos like this in the future, then hit that subscribe button down below and also that notification bell, that way you never miss an episode. But before we get into it, let me quickly pay some bills. Today's video is brought to you by Pulseway, which is a really neat remote monitoring and management software that I've actually deployed across my entire network down here in my studio. Pulseway is an all-in-one network management management platform that allows you to remotely monitor and even control all of your devices that you installed the lightweight client on, which by the way, pretty much every operating system is supported. I personally really like the phone application because it allows me to quickly see what's going on with all of my devices, such as their temperatures, what processes are running, and I can even run scripts and perform Windows updates no matter where I'm at in the world. For us PC gamers, this is perfect because it allows us to start up those lengthy Windows updates while we're away, so we know our gaming rigs are 100% good to go when we get home. There's also pages and pages of notification settings to configure so you can get all sorts of alerts from your devices. Head on down to the first link in the description to score yourself a free version account which supports up to two devices or use discount code ZTT to save two months off your next subscription. Alright so to kick things off before we get into each individual part, I want to first talk about the ratio of money that I spent between pure PC hardware components and the peripherals because there's a lot of varying opinions on this one. For $1,000 there's some people out there that only only want to spend 900 of that on a sick gaming PC build and then can only buy a cheap monitor and peripherals, but that's not what I decide to go with today. I personally feel like a really good balance for $1,000 is to spend $600 on the gaming PC, about $200 on the monitor, and then that leaves $200 for everything else. If you buy like an $800 to $900 gaming PC, then that PC is most likely going to be bottlenecked by a super cheap monitor, and we obviously don't want to do that. This $600 gaming PC build is certainly enough for 1080p with higher refresh rates up to 144 hertz so that's exactly why I wanted to spend a little bit extra on the monitor. With that little bit out of the way let's in fact start with the $600 gaming PC build and I actually released a full dedicated video on this thing already. See I'm always thinking ahead and you should definitely check that video out up here if you're interested in that. This build is actually rocking a first generation Ryzen 5 1600 because I explained in that video how we seriously took advantage of these crazy low prices on the first generation Ryzen chips and this is still a very solid and capable 6 core CPU. CPU. Also inside this build is an EVGA GTX 1660, both an SSD for the boot drive and a bigger 1TB HDD for more storage, and all of that is packed inside a beautiful deep cool matrix 55 case. For some quick benchmarks, this build hit 143 frames per second in Fortnite in 1080p with pro settings, 131 frames per second in PUBG in 1080p in pro settings, and for our tougher to run game, it hit 63 FPS with Far Cry New Dawn in 1080p in ultra settings. Once again, if you want to see the entire parts list in the full benchmarking run for this build then I will have that video linked down in the video description. Moving on from the build we have the monitor. Remember I did want to spend a little bit extra on the monitor so we can actually utilize this beefy PC and I decided to go with the Dell 2719HGF which is a 1080p and 144Hz panel and I also made a dedicated video on this one as well. The Dell 2719HGF costs $180 and you're getting some serious value considering the 144Hz panel, free sync, and just overall how clean and modern this monitor really looks. I've been super happy with this display and I've even made it my dedicated monitor for benchmarking PCs down here in my studio and I still think that this is hands down the best gaming monitor you can find for under 200 bucks. Getting into the peripherals now we have the mouse and I decided to go with this Corsair Night Sword RGB and I've actually been using this in my dedicated benchmarking setup as well and I've been enjoying this mouse for a couple of months now. The Night Sword RGB costs 80 bucks on Amazon and is rocking a custom Pixart PMW3391 18,000 DPI optical sensor which can be adjusted on the fly, 10 fully programmable buttons that allow for macros, and it's also packing my favorite external weighting system so you can really tune this mouse to your liking. I also really love the texture on the thumb pad and body because it makes the mouse feel much more breathable and less sticky and I feel like I have so much more control over the mouse. Now I know what you're thinking, the gaming footage that you've been seeing in most of my benchmarking videos lately has been absolute trash, especially for games like Fortnite and PUBG, but 
that's not a mouse issue, that, that's a human and a skill issue. Moving on, we have the keyboard, and I hope you guys don't get too mad at me for this one, but here I'm listing the Corsair K70 RGB MK.2, but here in the studio, I'm actually rocking an older version of the K70. Over the past few years, I've been loving the K70 line of keyboards, but I didn't want to recommend an older model, so that's why I'm recommending the MK.2. On Amazon, it costs $120, and it's rocking a full 104 key setup with Cherry MX switches, my favorite volume control dial that I I've ever used on a keyboard, and there's even a USB pass-through port to plug in your mouse and headset. And finally, the last part in our $1,000 gaming PC setup guide is the mouse pad, and I actually pulled this mouse pad from my main gaming setup because I love it so much. This is a Vipens extended mouse pad, which you can find for just 12 bucks on Amazon, and I have the red version here, but there's also a black version or even a world map version if you're interested in that. Well, there you have it. That's what I would personally buy if I had $1,000 to spend on a full PC gaming setup. I'm such a fan of the ratio of money that I spent, you're getting a very capable $600 gaming PC that can push higher frame rates in 1080p and some very good peripherals and a monitor and I just think that this is such a good complete package. I do want to hear from you guys down in the comment section about what you thought about the money ratio because I do want to continue to make these kind of videos for you guys. Well that wraps up my $1,000 gaming PC setup guide. As always, drop a comment down below about what you thought about this setup or what you would personally do to change it. After that, feel free to head on over to one of these two videos if you haven't seen them yet and definitely hit that subscribe button because coming up next we're checking out a baller budget gaming laptop you don't want to miss that video